Hello and welcome to Crank Punk Rides. My name is Lee Rogers. This is the 10th episode of my channel. I've been out for about two months, haven't made any videos. I've hardly been riding either because I had such a painful um, slip disc in my lower back. Lots of back strength and exercises, lots of painful, very painful physio sessions. And finally, finally, we're out. And this is about my third ride. And just look at that for a glorious landscape to be cycling in. And today, we're gonna take this bike down to the Taipei Bike Works bike shop. Taipei Bike Works is the store in my, I think I featured it in my second or my third video, the guys Alex and Alec. They have a very cool little bike store down in Taipei City. So we're gonna be taking this bike down there to get everything swapped out, all these components swapped out, and a few new ones added in to a frame, a new frame. It's the same brand as this one, Bond Bikes. I'll tell you a bit more about that brand later. Aluminium bike, really nice bike, custom made as well. And we're gonna get everything swapped out from this bike onto that bike. Now, the interesting thing about this bike that I'm getting today isn't the geometry or the tubing, um, although that stuff's really nice, but it's the color. Uh, I'm taking a big leap of faith here, and I'm not gonna show you this until a bit later in the video, but let's just say it's quite an outrageous, very, very blingy color. So now this is the bike, my trusty steed. I'm gonna swap all these components off, and this is gonna go onto the new frame. Um, as you can see, it's a very nicely welded carbon look, carbon fiber look, but it is an aluminum frame. We've got here a Praxis crank. I'm not a big fan of the Holotech. I call them No-Tech, the Ultegra, the Ultegra cranks. I broke two of those. The Praxis crank is really, really good. I've got Ultegra DI2 on there. And we have on the back wheel a Mont Chasserelle from DT Swiss. If you're a weight weenie, you'll know this wheel because this is the lightest wheel that DT Swiss to, a climbing wheel, really nice wheel. I've just got that one on the back. Over here on the front, we have a Sense Composites wheel. Now, this, amazingly enough, is actually my own brand. I started this with a chap in Japan. He's an American guy called Tim Smith. And uh, Tim has a brand called GS Astuto. And my other partner in this enterprise is actually Emma Pooley, the world champion, former professional cyclist, duathlon world champion. She's an athlete extraordinaire. And she asked Tim to get a set of these wheels, light wheels, to ride the Taiwan KOM in 2017. As some of you know, I'm, I work for the race and I invited her to come over. She's always been a hero of mine. So she got the wheels and she won the race on the wheels. And then we said, hey, let's start a company. So we had a couple of false starts, but we're looking to start it up again sometime early next year. So stay tuned for that. So everything's getting a bit raggedy. You can see from the bar tape. Apart from that though, everything's good. I've got my, my Rhino Walk bag on the back, saddle bag, um, cause I got my clothes in there cause I've got to get on the MRT. I've got a Thompson seat post there that I got when I was over in the UK, really nice seat post. And this saddle, this saddle cost me about $30. It's a giant saddle. I'm not even sure what the name is. It's all been rubbed off. But that saddle has suited me really well, which just goes to show you don't need to spend a whole bunch of money if you can get components that fit you. But there she is, there's my Bond. Custom geometry aluminum frame with all the bits and pieces and all that is gonna be swapped out. We're gonna head down there now and meet up with Alec. I'm gonna drop this bike off and then I've got to get on the MRT and come back up to my home up here because I don't have a car. I've got to pick up the frame. New set of wheels, really interesting wheels as well. Um, and a couple of other bits and pieces that I'll show you in a bit. So let's get down there and meet up with Alec and get everything rolling. So we're here on the very noisy, the very, very noisy Changyung Bridge. This is one of the main roads over from Lutso, the main bridges. We've come from way over there, that's Danseway. There's Yamingshan. Over there is the Taipei 101. This is uh, the river, the big river, looking a bit polluted down there. And we're gonna be joining these guys on their scooters. And I wanna show you a really cool little descent, a little bit hairy, a bit windy, kind of like a roller coaster. Really fun. Let's get on it.
dodgy, but a lot of fun. A little trip to the markets on the way to the bike shop. The sidewalk space here in Taiwan is pretty uh, prime real estate. And we're across the road here. Cut up here into the traffic. Nope. There we go. I always thought that cyclists should be taxi drivers because we all, we know all the little little uh, alleyways and the little shortcuts and the quieter streets. This is around around this is around the uh, the Bayman area. This is very much old Taiwan, old Taipei. I mean, it's not quite. You don't get as many of the big brand stores down here, or any at all, really. And it's kind of like a little old slice of. Old Taipei, we can see some of the cool architecture. Well, maybe not this part, but yeah, it's a vibrant little area. It's a lot of fun to hang out um, at night and stuff. You can see what Taipei is like. It's the old and the new. Here's an old temple. We're going straight under it. Uh, this area where Taipei Bike Works is located is right next to uh, this park and this little temple here. And this whole area is kind of, it's got a lot of potential to become like the next sort of funky hotspot um, in Taipei. So here we are and we're just about to arrive. There we go. And here we are, TPW. So part one of the mission accomplished. The bike is in the shop. As you can see here, Alec and Alex are both working away diligently and very quickly actually to strip out the old bond to get it ready for the new. One of the great things about living in Taipei is the ease with which you can get around. The MRT was first opened in, I think it was 1996, and there's about 62 stations now. Uh, the MRT has been ranked number one in the world in terms of safety and security. Taipei itself has been ranked as in 2019 as the number one place in the world for expats to live. And I'm sure if you're Taiwanese as well, it's a really nice place as well to live. Uh, but two journeys in one day is 45 minutes each way is a bit of a pain. But anyway, we're on our way to Taipei Bike Works. Well, one bike ride, two MRT journeys later, I'm finally down back in Taipei and uh, I'm just outside of Taipei Bike Works, which is just over there in a little park. And just before I go in there, I just wanted to show you some of the parts that I've decided to put on this new build. Obviously the group set sorted, that's the Ultegra DI2. I thought I would hate that when I first, when it first came out and then I tried a friends and I love it. I think maybe there's a lot of people like me who thought they were traditional and then you try the DI2 and you're like, wow, this is pretty plush. Um, of course, I love my Praxis crank. I might change out the stem. The bars are still pretty good. So basically three parts I'm going to change on this bike um, for the wheels, uh, tires, bar tape and saddle. So let's have a look at these tires. I've decided to go for the Continental 5000 TL. These were recommended by the builder of the wheels. He recommended these tires. I think everybody who's ridden a lot, most people will say that Continental are the best tires that you can buy. Um, some of the previous um, wheels that I've been using, I was using the Vittoria Corsa because I really like that tan wheel look. Excuse the phone going off there. I really like that tan wheel look, um, the tan tire look, but this bike is so blingy that I think that these are just gonna kind of maybe calm it down a little bit and just frame it. Um, so I've gone for those, they look really good. And then in terms of bar tape, it's the Super Cas, the Super Sticky Cush. And I gotta say, the wear on these things is brilliant. They lasted me about, at least eight months, nine months, 10 months. Now, apart from the wheels, this next part that's gonna go on the bike is the one I'm most excited about because this is a saddle that I wanted when I first got into cycling when I was a kid. Um, I couldn't afford this one, I got the next model down and I saw this online as I was looking for a saddle to match the new bike because the old saddle's getting a bit worn and I found it, the South San Marco. Now this box I really love. It kind of reminds me of the monolith from 2000 and 2001. I love that packaging. And then you open up the back. The best things are hard to get into, aren't they? Come on, there we go. There she is. Copper studded, beautifully handcrafted with leather. You can see that crazy funky design on it. And it's got the copper at the back as well. It is a Cel San Marco Regale Bottega. Thank you for buying a San Marco masterpiece. We hope you enjoy your ride. 
I'm sure I will. So that's going on the bike. I think that's going to look really good. Whew, it's getting hot out here. Okay, now let's look at these wheels. The most exciting part of this build, and they're right here from GS Astuto. There is the Astuto logo. These beautiful carbon rims with Baird spokes. Now, if you haven't heard of Baird spokes, take a look at this. It's quite hard to get it, but this is not aluminum, it's not steel, it's not carbon. It's an advanced polymer. So it's basically like a little piece of string. Now this polymer, give me a second, this is called Ultra High Molecular Weight Polytheme. And uh, the acronym, if that's the right word, is, is UHWMP. Um, 12 times the strength of steel, they say. 12 times the strength, but much lighter. So these wheels, um, these spokes, are quite revolutionary. And I think that in the future, we're gonna see more and more of these spokes getting onto mainstream you know, big brand wheels. These wheels are so light, it is crazy. These spokes are not rigid, so they actually wrap up like a piece of string. You can put them in your back pocket, you can put them in a pocket of your bag. Um, if you're doing any sort of crazy long distance, you know, ultra marathon type cycling day after day in the wilds, you could take your spokes with you and just string them up. Um, absolutely fascinating. I think probably the biggest advance in wheel technology since, um, since carbon, really, carbon spokes. And I'm super excited to try these out. They're really rare. Not many people have these wheels. And actually, um, not many people even know about these wheels. We've got the DT Swiss 180 hubs in there, which looks super fine. And if you can just see in here, you can see actually where the string, it's originally white and these were colored black. You can see where the string is coming in there. So it just looks super funky and super interesting. These were sent to me by Tim Smith. Now, Tim is a wheel builder and also a frame builder as well, who lives in Gunma, you know, just outside of Tokyo. He's a good friend of mine, and he makes the best wheels that I've ever ridden. The tension in the wheels are amazing. The balance is fantastic. They never go out of true. Kind of a disappearing breed, really. He's one of those craftsmen who, who's honed his craft over many, many years, and he makes absolutely beautiful wheels so i cannot wait to try these out his brand is called gs astuto and he also does bike tours out in japan so there's a plug for you tim uh keep at it and yeah go and check these these wheels out and these spokes out on the gsastuto.com website all right so i know you guys you do wheel building as well and um i know we spoke a little bit about these bird spoke wheels from astuto that you're interested in so there they are this yeah. is the first look at them that must be like nothing that's awesome. And you said these are normally white, so... Yeah, they're normally white, but you can color them, basically. So yeah. it's like a... So yeah, you kind can of see the white on the inside there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. the white's on the inside. Yeah, we'll cover that up. And no one crazy. would be wiser. And a strange... Man, that sounds great. Right. And, and that's not even broken in yet. <laughs> yeah. That could be louder. Yeah, that is... Do you want to weigh them and see how much they weigh? Yeah, let's see. I got the scale right here. Hey, if you want, I'll situate them nicely so not stock them up too much. Okay. Zero it out. Yeah, let me zero that out. The oh, truth put it in grams. I think it's going to be that light. Okay, let it go. Uh, 1180? Yeah, 1180. 1180, that's super light. That's, that's, I mean, anything, That's hill climbing territory anything right under there. 1,500 grams is like considered good. Yeah. It'd be quite a bit below that. So that's that. Job done. Uh, quite a long day, but I'm really happy to get the guys, uh, the bike and the wheels. They seem really excited about that stuff too, which is great. I'm sure they do a great job. They really are very diligent here at Taipei Bike Works. If you're ever in Taipei and need a bike, fix. so we wait a couple of days and then we'll get the new bike. It's another beautiful day here in Taiwan in Dan Sui. Uh, absolutely gorgeous. As you can see, I'm out on the bike path. There's a little cafe over there and a little bike shop uh, in a container actually, which one day I'm gonna come down here and make a little video um, of that enterprise. It's kind of cool. They kind of pop up um, every summer around here. And uh, I picked the bike up yesterday and the lighting wasn't very good. So I wanted to wait till it was sunny. Anyway, here it is. Here's my new bike. Here's the new Bond. Let me know what you think. Check her out. That's right. We went full mad crazy gold and not just any gold it's sparkly gold what's really interesting about the bike is in different lights it's different right now it's super super sparkly but when i picked it up yesterday it was about six o'clock seven o'clock and it was quite muted under the street lights like more of a mustard and i have to say i think that with this top tube 
and uh, everything else being black. And I went for the, like I said, I went for the dark, the full black tire to sort of frame the gold. I know it's a crazy color. It's kind of, I'm kind of sort of taking the piss out of myself with this, with this bike because it's so blingy. I'm letting people laugh at me, but <laughs> the funny thing is that I actually really like it. And um, my partner was getting a bit annoyed with me last night because I had it sort of sat where the TV usually is so I could just sit there and have a cup of tea and, and look at it for 30 minutes. This is the, uh, the trademark symbol that we have from our logo, uh, the Bond logo that is uh, on the seat tube. Yeah, it's turned out great. I see I've got a little bit of a sort of a copper, turn it around, bit of a copper accent there. And then we've got the copper on the saddle. And the saddle, it looks surprisingly clunky, sort of chunky when it's uh, sort of just on the table. But on the bike, I think it looks pretty good. There's quite a nice, quite a nice line coming down there. The practice crank looks great, nice and black. And uh, the chain, they cleaned that up. It's almost like a, a platinum at the moment or sort of a, a white gold, looks pretty good. So here are the Bond wheels. Uh, sorry, the Bird DS Astuto wheels. I've only ridden about 20K on them so far. And I have to say that I've, I've already noticed a difference. Uh, the difference that I noticed is that the, the road vibration, um, the bumps, and uh, they have these little white lines to stop you from going too fast on the bike path. They're really annoying. But with these, with these spokes, uh, much more comfortable. I felt it immediately. And it feels really, really plush and really nice. I'm gonna do a little bit of sprinting over the next couple of weeks just to see how they feel in returning the power. I'm not sure if that will have an effect. But for the weight, and for climbing and descending. Yeah, really, really interesting. I can't wait to sort of investigate more into these funky wheels. Really interesting. I think here that the silver head badge, uh, the steel head badge that we've got looks really nice. So the build turned out great. I wanna say thanks to the guy from Taipei Bike Works. They did an amazing job. So much care and, and attention goes into their work. And um, as he said, he treated it like it was his own bike, which is what every great bike shop should do. But as we know, they're few and far between these days. Absolutely thrilled with the build. Can't wait to get out on this beautiful day and ride it. Before we go, let's hear from Alec about the build. I'm here with Alec from Taipei Bike Works. Alec, can you tell me a little bit about what went into this build? Yeah, so you brought us um, your old bike and you said, hey, I want to use these wheels and I want to use the same parts, but I want to change out the frame. And we said, sure. So the first thing we did is we stripped down everything all the way down to the frame and looked at what was broken, what was okay and what needed to be cleaned. Then we went through the whole frame and measured everything, made sure everything was going to uh, go back on correctly. And we ran into the problem where the bottom bracket is actually different than the old frame. So we had that overnighted and got that sorted out for you pretty quickly. Um, everything else was pretty straightforward. Uh, I went ahead and made this a little bit nicer up here. Uh, you just kind of had all these wires just kind of hanging around over here uh, over time. And with this new stem that you got, you're able to actually run all the wires through your bars like you're supposed to, and then into your stem, and then just have your control module right here. I use heat shrink, so it's a much cleaner setup. You're not gonna snag it all the time, and it's actually a lot more aero than uh, what you had before. For all your cables, we went ahead and uh, just a preventative measure. Whether it's slick lined or not, we usually just put a little bit of dry lube in all of your cable housings for anything mechanical, either shifting or brake wise. It just prevents corrosion. It just feels really nice when you first get the bike. What do you think about this color? The color is amazing. Uh, it's definitely different uh, in the sunlight versus the uh, cloudy environment. It really pops. It goes really well with the, with the gold chain and the uh, full black wheel set. I think it's really going to turn some heads. So I'm off for a ride now to go and test out the bike. And uh, I hope you guys are going to do the same soon. Hope you get out on your bikes and have a really nice ride. As ever, stay safe. Thank you for watching. And I hope to see you again soon.